In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain how non-load bearing interior walls actually help to support a building. Um, and uh, this really isn't that complicated, um, but when you get into some of the structural engineering aspects of it, it can be depending upon the shape of the building. Let's start with the exterior walls and the corners. The corners will be your strongest points of the building simply because the mass of each wall that it intersects with adds to the strength. If you could just imagine the strength of the wall running parallel to it, it's going to be pretty strong once um, it's drywalled, plastered, stuccoed, the siding's installed on it. You're going to have a strong wall and where those walls meet at the corner will create some uh, extremely strong points simply because of the mass of each wall. I hope you understand that. Another example of that would be, let's just say you had two large stones um, and they were cut in rectangular shapes. Um, let's just say you had a stone that was 20 foot wide and it was 20 foot long and it was 10 foot in thickness and it intersected another wall. You could just imagine the mass of the wall creating an extremely strong point in the corner. If you were to take a bulldozer and push the wall over in the center, you could probably do it quite easily. Um, but if you went to the corner where these walls intersected, it would take a little more pressure and that's actually where the strength of the corners comes in. Now if we remove a section of the wall, it will weaken it because the mass of the wall will be cut in half or reduced drastically. And let's just take this illustration here. If we took a four foot section out of a 20 foot wall, then we would have, let's just say we took it out, we didn't take it out of the middle. We took it out to where you would have a four foot wall on one side, and then you would have a four foot section missing and then you would have, that would give you 12 feet, you would have a 12 foot wall on the other side. Instead of having a 20 foot solid mass to support the opposing corners, you now have a four foot mass and a 12 foot mass. And that, that really reduces the strength of the wall down. And again, just giving you an example here because the same, type of thinking applies to the interior walls also. By removing sections of the walls or entire walls themselves, um, you can actually see how it reduces the strength um, of, the, of the building. And I'm referring to the lateral strength, by the way, the directions that would go back and forth, not up and down. Now the center of the walls are your weak points. And I'm not talking about where they run parallel. I'm talking about anything that would run perpendicular. So if you can provide any type of support by adding another wall to these areas, you're going to strengthen it considerably and prevent it from leaning. I've actually seen walls lean. One wall I actually ran into was leaning three inches. And it wasn't because a wall was removed, it was because there wasn't a supporting wall there to begin with. So you can, just like the examples before, you can see that the strength comes into the mass of the wall connecting into the corner of it. And let's just say again here, we have a four foot wall. Um, four foot in length. That's going to provide us with some strength, but if the wall went all the way across, that would provide us with um, a lot of strength and a really solid tie. And again, I'm kind of going back to this bulldozer effect. If you pushed on the center of a wall without a support, you could probably move it quite easily. But if you had another mass supporting the um, center like a wall here, then it would obviously be difficult to move. Now the same thing would apply if we removed a section from the center. We will significantly reduce the structural strength, the lateral strength of the building. Any forces like a wind or hurricane that's going to be blowing on the outside of a building 
is going to be reduced. And this is, they actually use wind calculations to build homes. Structural engineers actually have um, the recorded, the highest recorded mile per hour winds in your area. And they use these to actually um, figure out what the lateral strength um, of the building will be required. How many walls, how many structural members if you're going to reduce the amount of walls in a home. And again, we see this in large buildings. You might walk into a large shopping center, a uh, grocery store, and there, are no, or there aren't any interior walls in the building. It's, 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 this building would be supported by the roof system, which uh, requires a lot of engineering, and the walls. So it's a completely different thing. You know, what I'm referring to here is a home or a building framed out of wood. With that in mind, let's take a look at a couple of pictures. Here's a wall that uh, it's actually a load bearing wall, but we are going to pretend that it is a non bearing wall for this uh, video. At the corner, we are going to have our strongest point, and you can see that there is a mass of wall. After it's drywalled on the inside, you are going to have a, uh, a strong wall or a relatively strong wall on the inside. However, we do have a large opening there to the left, and this is going to reduce the strength of the wall, but at the same time, we do have the top plates continuing across tying the two sections together. As you can see on the other side there is a window and of course the windows on the outside of the building and here's our wall again. The tie we are like I said we are getting some type of a structural tie we can actually use each side of the wall the mass on each side of the walls or each side of the opening here will be used now since we have a connecting point. If we were to remove the um, framing header, let's say, let's just say it's a non-bearing wall, we go ahead and we remove this. This is what we want to do as part of our project. Um, we want to have the ceiling flat, then this is something that you would have a problem with if you had a non-bearing wall and it was actually providing some type of, stru of a structural tie going all the way across. So you're not going to be able to remove every non-bearing wall or even a section of it um, in certain cases. So I just wanted to make that uh, clear. So I hope that provides you with a better understanding of uh, non I don't want to say non-structural walls, non-load bearing walls. They can actually provide a lot of structural support for your home. So if it makes sense, um, great. If it doesn't, feel free to leave any questions in the comment area and I will see if I can get to them as soon as possible.